We're back on InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm delighted to welcome author and investigative reporter John Rappaport, and the website is nomorefakenews.com. John published an article a couple of days ago now entitled, Are We All Living Inside a Virtual Simulation? And he joins us to talk about it. John, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Paul. Thanks. And just to explain to viewers the um, recent findings of this Bonn University study and why it suggests that the universe appears to be behaving like a computer simulation. Okay. The study basically says that the energies of cosmic waves are suddenly reshaped and refitted to go into a, ma uh, a matrix, you could call it, or a lattice, a background basic structure of reality. And this is a kind of a pixel-like structure, like a television uh, picture. So if this theory is correct, then it appears that there's some sort of an automatic program at work here throughout the universe where energies are reshaped, restructured instantaneously to become part of this very tight system, very tight structure, which surrounds us and makes up our reality. And if that's the case, then it's not too big a step from there to uh, infer that, hey, this whole thing could be a computer simulation, a some sort of uh, program that could also fit into the holographic concept of what the universe is. Right, and it also ties into the multiverse theory, doesn't it? I guess it's it's not contradictory to either the holographic universe or the multiverse theory. Both of those scenarios could tie in at the same time, couldn't they? Yes, they could, absolutely, because, you know, when you start thinking about this universe as a virtual simulation, from there it's an easy step to say, well, we could just be talking about one universe out of many. And are the rest of them simulations too, or are they different? Well, we wouldn't know the answer to that question, but there's no reason to suppose that every single other universe would follow exactly the same pattern of construction as this one. So yes, the door is wide open. Do you think this notion that the universe is a computer simulation validates or invalidates the reality of a god? You know, I don't think it necessarily does either one. I think it's still up to the individual to make that decision for himself or herself, because regardless of what the structure is, you can say there was a designer. And if you believe in God, then God is that designer. So I don't see any contradiction here between regardless of what somebody's beliefs are or aren't, this uh, idea of a simulation stands on its own. It still could be valid no matter, you know, it could fit into anybody's beliefs. All right. And, I mean, is it, is it a fixed and unchangeable program, do you think, or, or can we as humans mold and change the nature of this simulation through our thoughts, prayers, and actions? That's a great question, Paul. I happen to think that any structure can be changed. In this case, of course, all the emphasis on technology, the idea that, you know, this is an energy design that we're talking about here, this lattice, and it's formulated uh, according to certain principles that physics can discover. And if physics can discover those principles, then there's a possibility of changing the program or the structure. And I don't see why that wouldn't be possible. Of course, it would take an awesome amount of science in order to be able to understand it and do it. But even with the holographic concept of the universe, where you're talking about a two-dimensional surface that contains who knows how many lines of code that then project the universe as we know it, the obvious inference there is that people might want to get to the point where they could change those lines of code. So I think, uh, again, the door is open to the idea that this program is not permanent, that it could be changed, that alterations could be made. 
And of course, we know now that they've discovered, discovered through quantum physics that matter, time and energy itself cannot be divided infinitely. Eventually, you, uh, you get to the equivalent of basically the equivalent of one pixel on a computer screen because matter is basically empty. Uh, we also know that subatomic particles that make up matter are diffuse when not observed. Their behavior actually changes when they have an observer. So what does that tell us about the nature of reality if, if you know, in, in terms of quantum physics, things cannot be divided infinitely? Eventually, you get down to the equivalent of one pixel. Well, that would tend to reinforce this idea that there is a pixel-like lattice that, uh, you know, informs our reality and this universe. But at the same time, I would say it adds complexity to the problem because if matter and energy are behaving in ways that we don't understand while we're not observing them, then the idea of changing the program on which this universe is based could run into a whole series of problems. I mean, if the observer and what the observer is seeing are intimately connected and you start making alterations and changes in the basic program of reality through some sort of technology, that is only giving you answers based on what you can see and observe. What's happening when you're not seeing it, uh, that could be a whole other can of worms. Well, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because they've, they've learned that these atoms only really behave in a certain way in, in terms of their relationship with the matter around them. When, when they're not being observed, they behave differently. So it's fascinating. But I mean, in, in your article, you talk about this concept that we're all artists. And the way I thought about it was, you know, we all create our own universes. Isn't that what dreams are about? You know, we, we go to sleep, we create our own landscapes, our own characters, our own objects, our own, our own rules of physics even uh, in our dreams every night. So, you know, is that concept not too far removed from the idea that the universe itself is a simulation if in our own brains every night we create our own simulation on a regular basis? I'm right with you on that one, Paul. When I said in the article, we are all artists, that's exactly what I mean. You know, the history of Earth gives us millions and millions and millions of artists of all different kinds. And everything that they create, in fact, everything that people in their work every day create, because we're constantly inventing and creating, even when we're not aware of it, bolsters this idea that each one of us is creating worlds and realities and universes all the time. And so from there to go to, well, the physical universe is that kind of thing as well. It's a work of art. It's a fantastic work of art, but it certainly doesn't have to be the only one. And what is our participation as artists in the work of art that we call the physical universe? To me, that's not only an intriguing question, but I think that the answers deliver a tremendous amount of empowerment to the individual because I happen to believe that we all do participate in creating this work of art called the physical universe. And I mean, it's accepted now that, you know, our brains can only see what six or seven percent of the actual atmosphere that's around us, the matter that's actually there. Our brains are merely decoders of electrical impulses. That's why the whole brain in a vat theory came about, the fact that we could all just be brains in vats and not even know about it because um, what's hitting our eyes is, is only being decoded by our brain. It's not going straight through. It's, it's being analyzed, being decoded. Uh, it's all very fascinating stuff. Just finally, though, we're going to switch to the situation in L.A. there with Christopher Dorner, the fugitive on the run. Uh, you were talking just before we got on air about a, a possible connection with SSRI drugs. Can you discuss that? Yes, there are several of his so-called manifestos floating around on the Internet. And, you know, a cautionary note, I'm not assuming that the official scenario that we're getting about all of this is necessarily true, but accepting it for the moment. In one of these manifestos, Dorner talks about how he's been severely depressed since 2008. 
And he makes a big deal out of it in one of those statements. So you would assume that uh, he very well could have sought the help of a doctor, a psychiatrist, who would have diagnosed him uh, clinically depressed and then started prescribing these SSRI antidepressants like Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, etc. Well, we know from many, many uh, stories that are true and also studies that these drugs induce violent behavior, suicide, homicide. They've been indicted in a number of school shootings and mass shootings, and including some evidence uh, from Aurora and also Sandy Hook, but many other incidents as well. So if this is the case, we could be looking very well here at another psychiatrically induced killer. Someone whose report about the, the police in Los Angeles is a separate question. I mean, whether what he, everything he's saying there is true is a matter for an independent investigation. But as far as taking it to the point where he's killing people, if that is exactly the case, then we could very well be looking at someone who's been driven completely over the edge by these drugs because they're everywhere in society and they do, in fact, induce uh, horrendous violence. OK, we'll continue to follow the story. That's all we got time for now. The website is nomorefakenews.com. John Rappaport, thanks for joining us on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks so much, Paul. Enjoyed it Thank very you. much. That's going to do it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back 7 p.m. Central tomorrow night. Thanks for joining us. Pure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by Pro Pure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139.